A lot of people have asked me, what type of education do you need to become a health and safety professional? So in this video, I'm gonna give you the different things that you can do to better yourself, your knowledge, and your ability to successfully work as a health and safety professional. Now, if you don't wanna to listen to me because I'm not wearing a suit and tie, or you're a collared button up shirt, or even a polo, then just go ahead and click off of this one. But it's a, it's a lot better than wearing the, what this guy's wearing. <sighs> what? Nothing. Nothing. Now, if you're brand new into health and safety or you're thinking about getting into health and safety and you haven't subscribed to this channel yet, go down below and hit the subscribe button because in this channel, I post videos regarding all things health and safety. And I also try to provide tips and material to help you get better acquainted with your new role as well to help answer some questions that you might have. It's free, it's easy, and it takes 0 0.007 seconds of your time. So go down and hit the subscribe button. There are a lot of people that approach me on the job site or send me messages in their emails and ask me what it is that they need to do in order to get into health and safety. What kind of training or education do they need? I haven't always been very helpful and I usually revert back to telling them to go to college and get a degree in it, which is partly true. So we're gonna split this thing up into three different categories. First comes your primary routes of education. This is going to be what you need to look at first. If you're coming right out of high school or if you're just getting started in the game, this is one of the primary routes that you wanna to try to look at accomplishing first. Next is your secondary route of education. And this is going to be the things that are essential for your success as a health and safety professional. I, I know it doesn't really make a lot of sense for this to be secondary list if these are things that you need to know in order to be a good health and safety professional, but hopefully when we get to that section, it'll make sense. And then your your third route of education. These are going to be the things that help to amplify your knowledge and even your status in the health and safety field. And I really shouldn't even say status because there are a lot of really good health and safety professionals that I've worked with that don't have anything that we will discuss in this section. And then there are a few that do have things that we are going to discuss in this section and they seemingly don't know anything. Yep, that means don't always judge a book by the acronyms that follow in its name. You're one of these, aren't you? If you have the ability, go to college and start working on your degree in occupational health and safety. There are a lot of universities that offer health and safety programs where you can go and get your associate's degree, your bachelor's, all the way up to your doctorates. If you're currently working and you can't go to a physical campus to take your classes, online works just as well. One highly recommended online university is Columbia Southern University. They offer a widely accepted program in occupational safety and health. And as a matter of fact, you can get your bachelor's in occupational safety and health and a minor in fire science which if you're going into health and safety, really isn't that bad of an idea to get. But this is your primary route, the route that your parents told you about all throughout the time that you lived under their roof. And for this field, it's very nice to have. I don't know why I said that, because it's very nice to have in any field. So now your secondary route of education. Now, obviously your first choice, if you have it available to you, is to go to college. But if you can't do that, then you wanna try and soak up as much knowledge as you can from other sources of health and safety. And you can even complete some of the things in this section the same time that you are working on your degree through a university. But your secondary route would be your more technical classes. There's almost no limit to where you can find these classes. And what I mean by technical classes are that these are the classes directly related to your field. They're gonna help broaden your knowledge on things you need to look out for and understand the process and the how and the why some things are done such as confined space training or, or electrical safety, fall protection, or working on heights, depending on where you're at and what it's called. Uh, there's classes like, like fundamentals of health and safety, principles of industrial safety and hygiene. One of the first classes that I took when I got into this field was the philosophies of health and safety, or POSH, which is a 40-hour class that is held by the National Safety and Health Council. At least they used to be. I haven't looked at what courses they offer here lately. Now my recommendation is looking up your National Safety and Health Council and explore the different classes that they have and take everything that you can find. Other than that, you wanna look up OSHA and grab as many classes from them as you can also. You wanna make sure you get your 10 hour in either in construction and or general industry and the same for your 30 hour class for construction or general industry as well. Now these two classes are gonna be very valuable to you. And also, most employers nowadays demand that their employees and certainly their health and safety professionals have at least their 30 hour OSHA card, which is what you get whenever you complete the two classes. Your 10 hour OSHA class, you get 10 hour card, 30 hour class, 30 hour card, that type of thing. But other than that, if you're working as a health and safety professional right now, take as many of the classes that is available to you within the company that you work with. 
And really, you don't even have to be a health and safety professional now to take these classes to try to soak up as much as you can. Some, some companies, depending on the size, have classes that they have uh, that they offer every single day within the project. And you can go in and try to take as many of those classes as you can. Other, other places have them third party contracted out. And you may be a little bit limited to what you can find at that point. But National Safety and Health Council or OSHA are very good resources to try and get a lot of this technical training under your belt to get a better understanding of the process and the hazards and the things you need to look out for uh, when you're working in the health and safety profession. Now your third routes of education. And these you have to wait until you get a couple years under your belt as a health and safety professional. But these are your certification programs. One certificate that a lot of health and safety professionals strive to achieve is their CSP or their Certified Safety Professional Certificate. And this is pretty much the highest level, or the highest certificate that you could probably get within our field. But it is a bear. It's a five and a half hour exam that you sit through in order to answer questions from a large variety of topics pertaining to health and safety. And to even sit for this, you have to have at least four years experience spent as a health and safety professional, where 50% of your job is working as a health and safety professional. But under that one, you have your ASP, which is your associate safety professional. You only need one year of experience where safety was 50% of your job. And you can waive the four year bachelor's degree if you go to a university and you get an associate's degree in occupational safety and health. But again, this is a five hour exam. And finally under these, you have a couple of other things that you can try to gain as well, such as your occupational hygiene and safety technician or your construction health and safety technician, your OHST or your CHST. And these have their own requirements as well. And they both take roughly four hours to complete the exam. Now your CHST and your OHST are widely accepted within North America. And if you have one of these certifications, it's easier to find a job. Now having these certificates doesn't necessarily mean that you're guaranteed a job, but having these certificates helps to better your chance of separating yourself from the other applicants from a position that you're trying to go for. Now keep in mind though, this list is not all encompassing and there are dozens of other certificates out there that you can get in a, for a health and safety professional. But you need to sit down and think about where you want to go. What are your goals and what are you looking to achieve? But there are other certifications that you can get outside of this list outside of the board of certified safety professionals. And to be quite honest with you, we didn't even discuss all the certificates that the BCSP offer. I mean, you also have the American Board of Industrial Hygiene, the, the Institute for Hazardous Materials Management, the Institution of Occupational Safety and Health, the National Examination Board of Occupational Safety and Health, IOSH and NIBOSH. They're all very highly accredited highly recognized certification bodies. The certs on this list are more of the well-known certs that health and safety professionals shoot to obtain, but there are a lot more out there. If you just stuck with what we discussed in this video, chances are you'll be, you'll have a pretty good career, but you are not limited to what we just covered. Go to www.bcsp.com. Where's the .org? I'll link it down in the, the description, because like I said, we didn't even cover all the certificates that the BCSP uh, offer, Board of Certified Safety Professionals. That can be a mouthful sometimes. So you still have a lot more to look at and find out what is best for you and what avenue that you want to go down. I will also make sure that I link all of this stuff down below so that you can go and check out all of this on your own time. But that's going to be it for me. I hope you found this video entertaining or at least helpful. And if you did, make sure to leave a whole thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. If you didn't find this video helpful or entertaining, try lighting some candles and set the mood. But until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care of each other.